second day of the district virtual refresher or training series. Last night, we had a wonderful experience and we were blessed to have past international director Sangeeta Jatia with their inspiring and motivating presentation on new member orientation. Tonight, we continue this wonderful journey with another great presentation. Thank you for taking the effort and the time from your busy schedule to be with us this evening. For those who are not here last night, I am Lion Rohel Bautista from the Somerville Metro Lions Club of District 6 in J and the incoming GLT of the coordinator of the district. Again, it is an honor to MC the second night of the five day training series. This training course, as I mentioned last night, is presented by New Jersey Lions of 16L, 16J, and 16N. Thank you to District 16J Governor-elect Varsha Naik for spearheading this event. And to District 16N Governor-elect Marie Nieto and District 16L Governor-elect Douglas Boat for that collaboration. We are following the same format as we had last night. After the main presentation, there will be a question and answer portion. So we encourage you to type your questions, that is pertinent questions in the chat box. Please keep your microphones muted at all times. Also, as you have noted, we are recording this session. So without further ado, I would like to call District 6 and N Governor-elect Lion Marie Nieto for a brief talk on this evening's session and her district agenda. Uh, no, good evening. The Governor-elect of multiple uh, New Jersey Multiple District 16 welcome you to the Global Membership Lead Leadership Training. We have one common goal, and that is to strengthen our clubs. As district governors-elect, just like you, the club officers have built a team, have a vision, have a plan. Now we need to make it all a success. So let us listen and learn on how to make it all possible. Thank you. Um, that is it. I let's make uh, let's make this about the global membership leadership training. Let's listen. Let's learn. And uh, hope you all have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you, DG Marie. Now, let us welcome incoming council chair, Armando Guerra, to introduce our presenter for tonight. Thank you, Lionel Health and Batista. It's truly an honor to, to be here to, with all of you. <clears throat> and uh, thank you for all joining at the, us at the, today. The, uh, so basically, the presenter is our one and only the Lion Mahesh Chitmas. He's joined the, the Lions, uh, uh, I apologize. Uh, the Lion Mahesh Chitmas is a past council chair. And during uh, the, his council chair of the year, I was one of his governors, which uh, he embarked at the end and also chartered the four clubs at the, with the help of, the, of our DGE, the Vasha Nike. Uh, we had a spectacular year. The, we wind up actually becoming at the, the number one at the uh, uh, district in the whole entire United States with uh, his uh, tutelage. Uh, Council uh, Chair, the, also, he also the, is a GATT area leader serving in the Mid-Atlantic region in the United States. He joined the association as a Leo in 1985. And just a note on that, that, that he joined, his friend, his dad, is the one that actually paid his dues to, go, uh, to become a Leo. So you never know who you might actually bring in to Lions and as Leo, he also became the Leo president in India. So the, there's the line of Mahesh Chitness that, that today, so you never know who you, you might actually touch that, that, that becomes a Leo and becomes a lion today. Um, as an aerial leader server in the Middle Atlantic region of the United States, he joined the association as a Leo in 1985. He uh, also is a devoted husband to a new Chitness and a vibrant son of Ojas Chitness which uh, he's also well known around the Lions uh, uh, University the, and, and Lions at the International, just as well as Mass Chitman. He's a devoted, a promoted hands-on volunteer service 
to help our community. He is recognized worldwide for his compassion and innovative service ideas. He is an accomplished team leader builder in for-profit and non-profit sectors. Mahesha is recognized for his work in youth, women empowerment and social inclusion. He has motivated several teenagers in becoming effective leaders. In 2021, he was elected at, to serve as state advisor to Council of Governors of the Multiple District 16 in New Jersey, USA. So to me, it is an honor, a privilege uh, to introduce uh, Mahesh Chitness in uh, uh, introducing and uh, teaching us at your, about your club and global membership approach, GMA. Yours truly, Mahesh Chitness. Thank you so much, Armando, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, the, this topic, Good Morning America, GMA, uh, is close to my heart. Uh, this year, I'm going to focus quite a bit on that. Uh, you did mention that uh, I, I am an area leader for a global action team, but just for another eight days uh, from uh, 1st of July, uh, past council chair Winston Ceballos is going to take over that responsibility and he would be working with three multiple districts while I would be focused on the uh, global membership approach for 16J. We also have another uh, area leader for uh, global action team, uh, PID Cindy uh, on, the, uh, on this Zoom call today. So welcome, Cindy. Uh, this is what we have been doing, talking about for a period of time now, and that is the uh, focus of the conversation today. Before I get into this topic, before I start talking about uh, GMA, and uh, which, which sometimes seems very, very, uh, complicated and very academic. And we keep talking about all these SWOT analysis and this and that, and it becomes too complicated. But my goal today is to make, uh, to simplify it, to get it to our clubs, which the information that they can actually use and have fun with it. Okay. Before we begin, uh, let me, start asking you a question. Why did you join your club? In a moment, I'm going to launch a poll. There will be several um, options that you can pick from. You can pick more than one option. And be as uh, straightforward as possible. This is an anonymous Poll, so nobody will know what your answer is going to be. So I'm going to launch this poll. Uh, I'll give you about a minute to pick up whichever things and just, just be um, honest, as honest as you can, so that uh, we would get into this thing. Why did you join the join your Lions Club. Please start voting. I think by mistake, I have two polls there, but I just focus on the first poll. Can somebody tell me if you can see the polls? Because I cannot see anybody picking up choices. Well, now they, they are. Let's give another 10 seconds or so. Yeah, the, uh, the questions can be answered only by 
the attendees. When you make somebody a co-host, uh, like Zoom takes away that privilege. So uh, let's end the poll now. We have quite a few people who've answered. Oh, just can you end the poll and uh, publish the results? For some reason, I can't. Okay, uh, the, the results are um, that most of you, seven, almost 73% of you want to give back to the community. Quite a few of you want to make a difference in, in the community. A little bit of uh, a factor of fellowship, friendship. Some of you want to learn and grow, about 40% of you. And some of you want to join the association for uh, building a business or professional network. I'm going to stop sharing the results. So as I mentioned, most of you are, uh, you want to join this organization to give back to the community or make a difference in the community. How would you do that? You want to do that by being kindness, uh, by being kind. We have this slogan uh, that we really used quite a bit last year that kindness matters. Kindness does matter. Kindness starts right at home. Uh, whatever that you can do to support anybody is a service. It can be for an individual or a community that you can do by yourself. Just like holding a door for somebody, uh, uh, picking a bag for uh, elderly into the grocery store. Everything is a service. And that you can do by yourself. Then why do you need to join the association, a club? If you are seen or you are heard in uh, the contest of the, the fish, the small fish always have this fear of getting eaten by a bigger fish. So they have found a way to fight that problem. They sort of form a shape. They, they come together, form a big shape that scares away the big fish and they can survive. Similarly, for us to deal with a bigger project, a bigger social cause, you need to all come together and work in an organized manner. We be a part of an organized social work organized community service. Again, you can join the local organization focused on a specific local cause. There are advantages of that. If you are very, very focused on something that is close to your heart in your community, you can join a local organization. But there are some times, there are some causes that go well beyond what your community is. For that, we need to join an organization like Lions Clubs International. The, yesterday, PID Sangeeta did give a couple of examples about why, being, why be a part of a larger organization. I always keep giving variety of examples of how the Lions network supports each other. Um, I think I have talked to many of you in the past that uh, a couple of years back, just a few days before we went to Milan for the convention, uh, there was a big storm in Eastern part of the United States. We were uh, like, I, I was packing to go to Milan. Uh, I had my clothes and everything all over my bed. I was trying to pack. And late at night, I got a call from a governor in Texas saying that there are two kids who were supposed to go to the Lions Youth Camp 
in uh, Texas, they are stranded at Newark Airport. Uh, they were coming from Eastern Europe, did not know the language well, and they, they didn't even know each other. They were from two different countries and they found themselves in uh, Newark Airport and did not have a place to go. They couldn't, nobody could assign them a hotel room because they couldn't check in, they were under 18 and all those things. So uh, that night uh, I went in to pick them up and uh, put them into uh, one of uh, a member from the Old Bridge Visionary Lions Club. And uh, with the help of uh, uh, council chair elect uh, Armando, uh, we could find them uh, a flight next day to go to uh, go to Texas and um, be joined back the, the group that they were supposed to join. This could happen only with organization like ours. It's, it's, it's the whole network that we have that we support each other and um, make it happen. That is the goal for our clubs. And this whole purpose of what we are going to do today is to reach to that goal with some kind of strategic planning. We always have this, uh, anything that we do, there are, there are three factors. Whatever that we do, is the first thing that come in what we are going to do many times, then how we are going to do it, and then why we are going to do it. There is this concept of uh, Simon Sinek, one of the motivation speaker. He talks about the, this power of why. He gives an example uh, about the, the technology, the technology companies. Most of us in, in our, our personal life, in our uh, professional life, we always keep talking about what. The, the example that Simon Sinek always gives is about uh, the, as I said, like technology companies. Take example of uh, gateway computers. When I started working on um, IT in uh, United States in 1996. Every office that I went to, and I was a traveling consultant, so I went to several um, software companies. Every single company I went to, the computers were mostly gateway computers. They were the best, they were most penetrated uh, um, computer company in the United States had a, had a large base. They uh, eventually, uh, rather let me step back. The way that they used to advertise their computers, they used to say that like, oh, we have such, such great computers. Um, we have um, this, this much of RAM, this much of uh, processing power and uh, these hard drives and we have uh, the, the CD-ROMs and DVD drives and et cetera, et cetera, might be a um, uh, alien concept to if there are any Leo Lions here, but that is how they used to say, like, we have all that. Hmm? And why do you want to buy the computer from us? Hmm? Is because it'll, it'll, it'll save you time. It'll, it'll help you into your, your work. So you need to get a computer, and uh, uh, um, the, the computer will help you in um, getting your work done. But um, there was another uh, software, another computer company who came in with exact opposite. It came with a concept of why. If those who watched the Apple ad in 1980s, it did not say that they are going to sell computers. It did not say uh, what their computers do. They talked about why. The, the title of that, that ad was um, Change the World. It, it, they talked about 
we want to make a difference. We want to change this world. And then they, they proceeded to say that like, we, we do it with, how do we do it? We do it with uh, sleek designs, uh, very modernistic look, um, the innovation. And what do they do? What do they provide? They provide uh, iMac at that time, just a computer. But when they came up with different, uh, different devices like iPhone, I, I'm like iPads, the earpods, and whatever, everything that we bought because we thought that like we are being the trendsetters, we are taking something which is different. On the contrary, if you take the example of Gateway, Gateway was very successful in their computer business. But when Gateway came up with uh, uh, television set. Nobody even knows that like they came up with the television set. They were already building the monitors for computers. So they were all ready to build that. But when they came up with the uh, uh, flat screen TVs, nobody bought them because nobody believed in their why. And that is what is important when we do things in our life. We need to know why we are doing things before how we do it and what we do it. And that is the whole purpose of this global membership approach. We are going to talk to uh, our members. We are going to talk to our clubs on why. One of the things that uh, we used to do all the time with variety of these acronyms, uh, many of you don't even know those acronyms, that we used to have these uh, initiatives coming from Lions Club International that, oh, October is a membership growth month. Uh, the mm, April is uh, the Leo month and so on. We used to have so many months and uh, the years and, and whatnot. That since we are such a large organization, we are such, such worldwide organizations that one size fits all mean, may or rather did not work. Uh, the, the initiatives that we had from in, coming from international that really did not resonate with the clubs that we had. So uh, there was a lot of brainstorming that went in and the, the executives, the North American executives for that matter, um, in that, that time, uh, Judge Haynes, Vice President Brian, Vice President Patty came together and decided to have a bottoms up approach, grounds up approach, making club as the focus and finding out why we want to have service into that, their areas. Why do we need more members and so on. And that is the whole focus of uh, the, the, initially it was NAMI, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But uh, even after um, Vice President Doug Alexander joined the team, the Doug, uh, Brian, and, and Patty together, they are, they are focused on pushing this idea forward that our club need to come up with the, uh, the vision for where, where we want to go. The GMA, uh, Global Membership, approach or NAMI, North American Membership Initiative, initially it was. It is all, it is a process that they are giving us. How do we use this process? How we are going to enhance the service impact is up to our clubs. We want to empower our clubs to do more and more service. When I'm talking about empowering service and et cetera, et cetera, why do we need members? I found a very, very interesting ad, and I want you to watch that ad. I'm going to shut up, and I, I want you to watch this ad for a moment. Every new line means two more hands. Join us. Lions.org.au. That is why we want uh, members. 
we want members because we want to deliver service. As you said, uh, that, that lion's family went for uh, cleaning up a house and the, the task was a little bit large. And that is where we need two more hands. So all our clubs, every single lion on this call might have always felt at some point of time, oh, I need two more hands. And that is the reason for us to look for the membership growth. And the focus right now is on membership growth for that specific reason. Before uh, I go into the details of uh, uh, the global membership approach, I would like to have, I would like to talk to you about the trends in our multiple district in our state. Having said that, that is one of the, this is one of the very few times that I'm going to talk about district and multiple district today. And the whole of my focus is going to be about the clubs and we will be talking about clubs and their service and their membership as we go. But uh, let's, let's look at the uh, membership trends in our multiple district. In 19, uh, in 16N, uh, the north part of our, our multiple district, north of, a part of our state. Um, this, these membership trends start from the time that we redistricted. Our redistricting was done in 2014. And from that point on, the, how the membership went per quarter, and this is up to the last quarter. I haven't worked, our final quarter is not over yet. So there could be a bit of change in this, but um, we steadily dropped membership in 16N. What about 16J? Uh, 16J, we went up and down, uh, but sort of it remained fairly steady. Um, it went up and it went down and it went up again and so on. And about 16L, our South District, the South Jersey District, they were flat for a little while, but they are dropping membership a little bit right now. But there is a there is a common theme, common trend here that we are we are dropping our membership uh, bit by bit. There could be various reasons. We need to figure out why we are dropping the members. If you look at the uh, the global trends, if you look at the um, North American trends, not only about our association, not only about Lions, but many other organizations are uh, losing members right now for the last 30 something years. And when I talk to many of the people in the community service here in New Jersey and all around, uh, there, there was a theme that sort of came out that all these clubs started losing the, uh, the membership in mid, uh, like late 70s, mid 80s and so on. And the reason that uh, was given to me by several people, and there is a theme to it. So it is not like sort of just a conspiracy theory, but uh, this is a theme to it. What I was told that uh, since the, uh, the Lions were doing a lot of uh, local supports, like supporting the, the local schools, uh, building the uh, the ramps for the wounded veterans, um, uh, and these small, small little projects that we used to do in our local areas. But when the Social Security Administration uh, started supporting, it became the, uh, the the sort of catch net for the people who are not doing well. And uh, when our our, our our tax dollars, our property tax dollars, started supporting the local schools. Uh, local lions lost their uh, service project many times, and that that sort of uh, pushed the membership downwards for a little while. And in the process, also there is a, a, a tectonic shift in the lifestyles. 
uh, the way that uh, we grew up and the way uh, my son grew up, there, there, is, there is a large difference. Uh, this is a sort of an internet generation. They do things, they, they think in a different way because they are exposed to a different uh, technology, different way of life. That also changed. And uh, sometimes like we did not adopt and we did not understand that why. And that is where uh, this GMA comes in today. We would be discussing about that why and what process that we are, uh, nobody knows that why today. We need to come up with that why. And for that, we would be discussing about the process that we are going to follow, the process that has been recommended by the Lions Clubs International. Now, what is GMA? Good morning, America? No, Global Membership Approach. It is a process. It is not an initiative. It is not an award. It is not anything else. It is a process. It is the tool that they give you to improve our service impact. It is pretty simple process, but the impact is being felt into some of the districts. Um, it, is, it, is a, it is impactful, that process. It has proved to be a good tool in many of the districts in North America. But let me sort of go over the timeline of that. In uh, 1819, two years back, the process was launched as NAMI, North American Membership Initiative. It was for uh, USA and Canada, mostly. A year later, nine pilot districts were chosen from USA and Canada. They started working on this uh, North American membership initiative process. A year later, last year, the, not last year, this year, uh, which is going to end in like next eight days, all districts in North America were given a choice to opt into this process. And then this, this was treated as a pilot for the whole rest of the world. The North America was treated as a pilot for the rest of the world. And they changed the name from uh, NAMI, North American Membership Initiative to GMA, Global Membership Approach. The, this initiative was launched in the middle of the year. What it means is this, the coming year in 21-22, all districts in North America would be implementing GMA. And the pilot districts around the world would be uh, implementing the same program. The year after, 22, 23, all districts in the uh, world would be invited to uh, be a part of a global membership approach. What it is uh, what the, the NAMI is doing is providing you tools, providing you resources to, to, to go through a process that is a that is little more structured. Okay? Um, I, when I was talking about it, many people in initially felt that like, oh, it is a, it is a overhead. It's like we are doing too much of uh, academic work. We are doing a lot of uh, technical work. But not so. This is what we have been always doing. Which is, this is what we do. We have to just put that into uh, a, a perspective, be accountable, and record this, document this, so that the, the future leaders, the incoming leaders, will learn from what, what, is, what went wrong or what went right. So we can build, on, build up on our successes and avoid those pitfalls, avoid those failures. Okay, uh, till now I was talking a lot about things in general, but let's talk about the clubs. What are the areas for focus for the clubs? We have been talking about this district NAMI, district needs to um, bring in new members, build, 
uh, existing uh, the uh, build new clubs, improve the membership satisfaction, give support to our leadership. Those were our focus areas for the district. But now, as I mentioned earlier, this process is supposed to be grounds up. It's supposed to be from clubs going up. So we did start because of we are such a large organization. We did start with the district. Uh, some of the areas in North America, they started working on zones, but the whole thing about GMA is to start with the clubs. So what are the focus areas that were recommended by the Lions Clubs International for our clubs? First area is bring in new members. Why do you bring new members? We bring in new members to improve our service impact to provide the service that our club is supposed to provide. Find out what the needs in terms of human resources that we need to have in our clubs and bring in those members so that we can serve our communities. The next focus area is service projects. We would all think that it's obvious. We always keep doing service. That is what we are for. Our motto is we serve. But at the same time, sometimes, as I mentioned in the example earlier, the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the impact of Social Security Administration on our service project, sometimes we did not do our need assessment. We did not find out what our, our communities need. And one of the areas, focus areas in NAMI is to find out the right service project for your club, both to serve your communities and improve our, uh, uh, improve our service impact. The third focus area is the leadership and, uh, leadership and operations. How can we improve our processes? How can we improve our, our um, leadership? Many times when we say leaders, we, we have positional leaders, okay? Uh, they are like, they work because they are presidents or they, they have the authority over the club because they are presidents of the club. We have to groom our leadership into being the influential leaders. They need to be able to use their, their, their office, but at the same time, they need to be the, the the visionaries, the, the uh, motivators that they are supposed to be. So we need to bring in this leadership. We have several resources, which I would talk about as we go, but using those resources, uh, we should build our leadership and build our operation, build our, make our club uh, more responsive to the needs of the, the organization. I mean, the, the needs of the community. We need to be more responsive to our members we need to improve that membership satisfaction by our operations. And uh, last but not least is improve the communication, both internal and external. Improve the internal communication so that everyone knows what is happening in the club. They are part of what, what is happening in the club. They feel they belong to the club and the other part would be the external communication. We need to need people to know that what you do. Even if the uh, even if somebody wants to come, they they have needs and they want to find out um, whether you can help them. How would they know that like you can provide them that service? I'll give you a couple of quick examples. One is during Sandy. Um, during Sandy. Uh, our district got the, uh, uh, the emergency grant from Lions Club International Foundation, 16J, did get this emergency grant. Our governor at that time, John Coblin, did a lot of brainstorming with uh, uh, his cabinet. I was part of that ca his cabinet as a second vice governor. Uh, we had a lot of brainstorming and we came up with this uh, idea that like we should get the blankets to be uh, given to the, uh, the people who are suffering because um, it was getting cold and uh, uh, we did not have power at homes and people have lost their belongings and blankets was the, was the 
best thought that we had. We reached out to all the clubs into affected areas, uh, send them emails, call them, and sort of got ourselves ready to get the blankets. Uh, we got the blankets and uh, we wanted to distribute them. But unfortunately, our local residents did not know that Lions Club is also into uh, the disaster relief. So nobody came to us asking for blankets. So we have to end up going door to door, literally to distribute the blankets. Similarly, uh, during the, uh, this, this pandemic, this emergency, nobody come, came to us asking for help for uh, food or clothing or uh, anything else. So uh, our, uh, everybody needs to know what we do. If somebody, we do, uh, we have a Leo club. Hmm? So if somebody searches for youth services, uh, youth empowerment, all that on Google, our name of our club need to show up, which it doesn't most of the cases. Like the, even the service that we provide for such a longest period of time, the, the vision, um, if you, uh, if you search for a community service vision, uh, our local clubs don't show up. So this area that we need to work on, whichever, whichever project that your club does, letting your local communities know that this is what you do. And that is one of the focus areas of the GMA going forward. Okay, let me talk about the process now. Okay, uh, from here, it, it seems a little complicated. I'll, I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible, but uh, I promise you that whatever that I talk about, it might sound very technical, it is not. Okay, I'll give you one example and then you would know how simple it could be. The GMA is a, is a simple four step process. The first step is build a team. Second step is build a vision, build a plan and build success. Simple four step, nothing more, nothing less. Some of it again might seem oh, team, vision, plan, success, what is all this? Okay, let's make it very, very simple. Let's take example, simple example of your household. We have uh, 4th of July coming up. So, we want to do something on 4th of July. That is what we are talking about. We, we have to do something on 4th of July. So what you do, you build a team. If it is a larger household, you just like three, two, three, four people come up. Or if you are working, same thing, if you're working in a, in a group of friends, group of like few families coming together, you build a team. A couple of people come and they, they decide to take the lead. They, they build a team. Then we start talking about what we can do. We are trying to build a vision. Oh, do we want to go for a, uh, a road trip? You want to fly into a, a exotic destination or you want to do a barbecue at home. So this team builds a vision asking uh, all the uh, constituents of this group um, if it is family, everybody in the family, you bounce off this idea and eventually build a vision, building a plan. Then we decide that like we are going to do a barbecue. We don't want to travel. Uh, it's still COVID and we are going to be at home and uh, we would we'd do a big barbecue for our friends. So then we decide like what kind of uh, food that we want to get. If we want to have some games, if we want to play touch football, where are we going to touch, play touch football? What's going to be the logistics and all that? We build the plan. And then building success on the on 4th of July in the afternoon. Um, somebody in the house who have already did, did all the preparation uh, got your meat marinated and uh, vegetables cut and every, like the salads ready and so on. And then uh, in the afternoon, when everybody comes in, you start uh, barbecuing, 
the needs that you have. So you are building your success. So the process is as simple as that, okay? Only thing that we are working on when it comes to GMA is to document that process so that our, our successors, our future would know what we did. Our organization was one of the most successful organization in the history of the world. We were growing at a very, very rapid pace uh, in, in 20s, 30s, and 40s. What did we do right? If we had documentation of that, we could have used that today and rebuilt our association. I always wonder, I, I, I'm, I was reading the history of uh, Lionism during this interesting time. When we were locked down, I was going through what happened during the beginning part of uh, our association. It was again a centennial year for our New Jersey Lions. So I was looking at the history of lionism in New Jersey. That is the time that we grew very, very rapidly. And we have faced with a similar situation right now. That time it was uh, the influenza pandemic and now it's COVID, the similar situations. Uh, how lionism grew dramatically after uh, 1920, 1921, and how we can replicate that. We don't have that documentation, but our future generation should not be stopped. And I'm not talking about on a global level, even at a local level, if our club is, is successful in recruiting say 10 members this year, okay, how can that be replicated next year? How can that replic be replicated after 10 years? So documenting that is one of the areas that we are going to uh, work on. So uh, let's go into deep into this, um, this whole process of uh, bu building a team, building a vision, building a plan and building the success. Building a team, okay? How do you build a team? Okay. Get people involved. They always say that only informed lions will support you. Only engaged lions will participate. And only enthusiastic lions will cheer for us. So the, the whole process would be getting lions informed and getting them engaged into uh, what our process is. Taking it to the newest lion in our club. Every single member of our club every single member, uh, club in our district, every single district in the world, if they come together and work together and everybody's informed, that is when we, we, are, uh, we are likely to achieve success. So building the team is, is very, very critical in the success of our association as a humanitarian service organization. Just to give you an idea again about the district, uh, when we are working on, again, I know that like we have three districts here, but I'm just going to give you a reference of what um, our district is doing, 16J is doing for building the team for the district. Another reason why, why I'm saying like, I have this slide in front of you is to know if you need any help, if you need any resources, we have, a team in place where you can go to and get the help from. The team goes some, something like this. The chairperson for global action team is the district governor. District governor is going to be the, uh, the servant in charge of the entire district. District governor serves the entire districts in every single aspect. In membership area, uh, he or she is supported by the GMT coordinator, the global membership team coordinator. And the GMA leader is supposed to give the vision, give the, the research, give the, the plan for the execution to the global membership team. <clears throat> so uh, we would have a team 
for the global membership team. And I will have uh, the GMT coordinators talk about it when they are available and then when they are um, discussing things with your club. But as a GMA uh, team, global membership approach team, we would have, as I mentioned, we have four, uh, four focus areas for the district, new members. For new members, we have sub teams like team for gender parity, new voices, bringing in more women into our, our association. Diversity, our club should need to reflect our communities. So bringing in those, those regional, ethnic, or religious groups, which are not part of our association, to be a part of our association so that we can truly reflect our communities. We, have, we should have a team for that. We have young lions who can uh, either come from the campus clubs or the Leos converted into lions, or just like sort of community members who came together and formed, a, oh, I'm, I was just jumping over. I was saying new clubs. This is for existing clubs bringing in new members into our clubs. And how can you make them feel that they're part of this organization and not uh, the outsiders into this organization? And then the priority clubs, we have, um, I, I have observed that in our state, we have a lot of clubs, which are small clubs. Even if our average uh, club size is about 25, we have several clubs which are under 15. And those would be our priorities to build them up because when you have a smaller club, you may not be able to provide the service that is required for our communities. So making that as a priority, we would have a team to, to look into it, helping them to grow from uh, uh, lower number to getting to at least 20, 25. Second team would be new clubs. We would be talking about millennial clubs, uh, again, campus club, Leo Lions clubs. That is what I jumped on when I was talking to, uh, talking about young lions. Uh, then uh, unserved areas. We lost several clubs in our our uh, multiple in our state. Uh, if you look at the the western part, uh, northwestern part of our state, uh, Sussex County, Warren County, Hunterdon County, Mercer County. We have so many areas, a wide uh, spaces so to say, without any club. Uh, so we need to work on those unserved areas. Ethnic clubs, uh, there are certain ethnicities which are not been supported as yet. Uh, we would work on that, as well as some specialty clubs, uh, working on clubs like the, uh, like we do have specialty clubs like uh, Special Olympics Club or Fitness Club, or um, the clubs which are focused on certain areas like diabetes. We want to enhance that um, that focus, that those causes and work on it. The third uh, focus area is membership satisfaction. We would have a team for um, constitution by law support. When I'm saying constitution by law support it is not only the, the legal part of it, but grooming the clubs, grooming the leadership uh, to make sure that they, they understand the importance of being in a structured organized uh, community service and uh, we should have a team to support that. Then in my area, in 16J, we have uh, some clubs which are uh, dom like, they are, they are Spanish speaking clubs. Um, and there is a large number and they sort of are left out at times because um, the, the district leadership doesn't speak that language. So we need to uh, have some, uh, so that we should have a team that supports the Spanish clubs. Then uh, the, the service impact. Let's go back to the poll that we had. Okay, Most of you wanted to make a difference. Most of you wanted to uh, serve your communities, wanted to give back to your communities. Uh, you wanted to have that service impact. At times, uh, sometimes just because of uh, the, the age of the club, the average age of the members in the club, uh, we we tend to become a check writing club. You do some fundraisers and write the checks for other organizations. 
instead of having that, if we can bring in a different service projects, we can bring in this vision of newer uh, potentially uh, service projects that our clubs can handle and give that feeling of fuzziness in their heart and make sure that they are serving their communities. The membership satisfaction will obviously increased and uh, we should have a team to support that. And then, then the Leo Lion uh, uh, team, uh, Leo and Leo Lion liaison team to make sure that our Leos are happy, our Leo Lions are happy. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference between our uh, other members and the younger members. They do join this association for serving people, but we need to groom them. We need to mentor them. They come because they feel that they will get some mentoring and uh, we need to work on that. And we should have a team to, to support that. And leadership support is the last focus area for the district where we would have the LCI um, training, the, the, uh, the training that has been developed by LCI, like the Advanced Lions Leadership Institute, the Regional Lions Leadership Institute, and the Lions Learning Center, these online courses. And there are several such opportunities, learning opportunities for our members. So giving, bringing that information, helping them out. The district initiative, something like this, uh, having uh, online uh, presentations for our clubs. Even if New Jersey is a smaller state, we still have wide areas to cover. So having the, the trainings in uh, trainings by the district at, at various parts of the district would be critical in success of our clubs. Then succession planning. If we see some clubs, we have the same residents over and over and over. Um, for, for two years, three years, five years, 10 years at times. So finding and grooming the leaders to support our clubs is a critical part of our, our initiatives. And again, same thing, grooming in the young lion leadership. And when I'm saying young, it need not be uh, teenagers, 20 year olds, but um, the average leadership average age of leadership in our association is close to 60. So even if we bring in leadership into the, the 30s and 40s and 50s, we would be encouraging the younger leadership. With that, let me get back to uh, what uh, we were discussing, building a team for our clubs. The, the thing that I would recommend is to build a resume for the club. What, does it, what do I mean by resume of the club? The club resume is the, the projects that are your, your regular project, the projects that you do. The skills you have in your club, your membership, look at your membership, talk to your members and find out what their skill sets are. What, uh, what is their profession? What, uh, what is their education and how you can use it to enhance your service. So create a club resume as if like you are going for a job interview and you are creating your own resume. So just treat this as your club's resume. Um, write it down, not just talk about it, just write it down on a piece of paper and uh, uh, we can uh, come up with a club resume. If you have looked at the top right part of my screen, uh, I'm going to keep the club focus areas there all the time. So you can relate all this when you are, when I'm talking, you can relate uh, how would a club resume would impact uh, bringing in new members? How would service project impact club resume and so on? This is just my, uh, my way of presentation. Then a uh, skill will matrix. Again, um, uh, looks very, very complicated, but it's very, very simple. Um, like when you are doing the uh, club resume, you, you might have found out already that these are the skills in our club, but at the same time, you need to find out the, the will of the person to work also and create a matrix. I'm just giving an example. Um, if there is a, like we need somebody to do our um, treasurer's work, do accounting for us. So the obvious person that we'll find, oh, there is a CPA in our club. So this, this person has skill. But if the, uh, the 
the trade like the accountant that we have in our club feels that like sort of oh like i do that all the time at my work so i don't want to crunch my numbers but i would be I, i'm very very passionate about environment and i'm going to go and do environmental projects so his will would be uh, not high his skill set would be high but his will may not so you have to create that skill will matrix to figure out who is the right person for delegating a particular task then while you are building team uh, find out the long range goals for your club uh, something like okay like sir so our club is going to focus on diabetes our club is going to focus on uh, grooming our youth in our uh, our local areas the so long range goal uh, of your club on a very very high level is the, the first step while we are building our team and then finding out a strategy for delegation and ownership to what what is going to be your culture in your club that is also an important aspect while you are building a team let's move on to the next slide building a vision this becomes very very complicated so as it seems like i just gave you an example about 4th of july um just think uh when uh, we were planning for our 4th of july last year not last year last year is a different example but say a couple of years back uh, when we were thinking about 4th of july okay how complicated it was to decide where to go when we are like sort of two three people start discussing hmm? it it sometimes becomes very very complicated okay and it seems complicated but again it is if you go through a a structured process it becomes a very very simple thing for building a vision uh, the again this is this is how we we our our brain processes things this is how we do things but we are just putting it into a structured format here first thing that we do is research find out information say for example service project what are the what are the service projects that we can do what are the needs in our our community you bring in all that possible information hmm? um just ask your club members to write it down on a piece of paper just have a stack of papers hmm? to to do this research the next step is analyze and summarize those uh, those reports the word swot analysis has been thrown around quite a bit in last couple of years people are scared of that people don't want to do it uh, but i will discuss about that in a moment and it, i'll tell you how simple it is the next step after the analysis and summarizing is finding out the strategic options you have uh, analyzed your club you an analyzed what are your strengths what are your weaknesses and uh, you can come up with the strategical options for you to go forward you might have like 20 you might come up with with uh, 20 options uh, nail it down to the the priorities these are the first 2 3 4 5 things that we will do now if we have enough resources we'll do the 6 7 8 9 9 if we have more we'll go down from there so finding out the strategic priorities is a part of building the vision and create coming up with a general road map is the the build a vision process i'm going to just quickly discuss about this what and the strategic options a little bit swot what is swot as i mentioned strength weaknesses opportunities are threats the first thing is strengths strengths of you strengths of your club which is internal there is no like your strength is your strength um there are no external factors who who affect that the strength of your club is you have five medical doctors in your club who can work on the diabetes related project is your strength that cannot change you have five five doctors in your club that is internal to your club you have to leverage your strengths weaknesses 
again, weaknesses are also internal. You are, uh, the membership is getting older. It is, it is, it can be a weakness of the club. We need to manage those weaknesses. Opportunities, opportunities are external. The, the, and then sometimes we do, it is a how we look at the opportunity also. Uh, like uh, the, how do you look at the external force as an opportunity or threat? It is up to us or our, our, our vision per se. For example, COVID, hmm? it is an external factor. Our club cannot control anything. Our, our club has no, like, no authority over anything that we can do to reduce the impact of COVID. So it is an external factor, but it can be a threat or an opportunity. You can take it as an opportunity because like because of COVID and because of there are so many uh, people who are hurting, it is an opportunity for our club to improve our service, push our service forward. As Melvin Jones used this uh, influenza pandemic as an opportunity to grow our association we have an opportunity to grow our association because of the, this pandemic. And threat, threat is also external. Uh, some people uh, feel that, okay, because of COVID, uh, we are not able to go out and recruit members. So how to minimize them impact? Take advantage of ex external, um, external force and use it as an opportunity or minimizing the impact of the threat. How do you do? How do you do this analysis? How do you get this done? Thing done is uh, you can ask each one of your club members to just write it down again on a piece of paper. What are our strengths and weaknesses, and what what opportunities that particular person feels that we have? What are the threats that we have? Each one of us we can ask each one of our mem members to uh, write it down. Take four papers, write it down strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Put them into four different bins. You can do that exercise when uh, at your club meeting. Um, when people come in, just ask them to write these four things and put it in four different bins. Okay? And that becomes your SWOT analysis. Put all those things together, all the strengths together, all the weaknesses together, all the opportunities together, all the threats together. It is, it is the opinion, it is a view of each one of your members becomes the opinion of your club. Your, 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 your club is a reflection of your members. So if, you're, if your mem members talk about their, uh, their SWAT, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat, that becomes your combined SWAT analysis. How do you use it? The, the biggest, uh, issue that I have with SWOT analysis. We keep talking about SWOT analysis. We, we, I get the, the report, SWOT analysis report several times, but the, the problem is we, have, we don't use it at times. So how do we use the, uh, the SWOT analysis? Um, in the business world, it is called TAUS. It is just reverse of SWOT. So don't worry about the acronym. What you do is now we talked about those four bins, right? the strength, weakness, opportunities, threat bins. So pick up one thing from each of the, um, the bin, say one from weakness and one from threat, and come up with a strategy for that. Say uh, the, the uh, weakness is our uh, membership is, uh, uh, membership in the club is getting older. Threat is the, the visibility. We don't have a visibility, so nobody knows that we exist. So we won't be able to come up with uh, the, uh, the membership. We will not be able to get the new members coming into our club. So come with a strategy that like, oh, be visible. Um, advertise in a local newspaper or things like that. So you can come up with this uh, these combination of things between uh, weakness and threats, weakness and opportunities, strengths and threats, and strengths and opportunities. 
Um, the this this is a big exercise for many times for the MBA students, but it, it doesn't have to be complicated. As I said, pick up two things from two bins, uh, combine them together, and uh, you can just like have a, a brainstorming session in your club, five, 10 people sitting together, come up with a strategy. And you might have like sort of a million strategies that you, you can have uh, in, in, in such a way. And you may not be able to work on each of those, uh, those strategies. So um, you should do the decide on the strategic priorities. You have this hundred uh, strategies that came out of this TAS. You can use, you can prioritize, like you can give the ranking for your, your, your strategies and prioritize them and use them for, for your next step. Build a plan. Planning starts with uh, a goal statement. We sometimes uh, we misunderstand the difference between a uh, plan and an action item. The focus needs to be first on a smart goal statement. What do I mean by smart goal statement? SMART is an acronym for specific. Your goal needs to be specific. For example, I'm going to get five new members is a specific goal. It should be measurable. With like this five number I gave, it is a, it, it is a, it is a, it is a number that you can measure. There are five, five members in your club or not. You would know. That is that is the uh, the thing that we can measure. If you are uh, if you are talking about service project, hmm, we will serve uh, five hundred meals. It is a measurable goal. It should be attainable. Whether your club has an ability to perform that activity. You cannot, we will not be able to say that like, oh, I, we can go and uh, clean up the uh, Everest as our environmental project. It is not attainable to most of our clubs. Having said that, uh, one of our clubs in Kathmandu, Nepal has, has done that. It is attainable for them because that is what they do. Our club, knowing what is attainable for our club is very, very critical for us. Relevant whether that project is relevant to your club. The, the cause might be very, very um, heartwarming, very, very important, but is it relevant to your club? Uh, I'll give you an example that uh, I heard of. Again, it is a noble cause that Rotary has undertaken with uh, the Gavi and other organization to eradicate polio from the world. They have been working on this for a number of years and they want each one of their clubs to be involved into that polio eradication campaign. I heard from a few Rotary clubs when I was talking to Rotarians that like, okay, like sort of, we don't have polio in the United States for 20 something years now. So why do I, why I'm working on it? So it is not relevant for them. There is a reason why Rotary is working on that because Eradicating a disease is, is, has to be worldwide. It has, you cannot eradicate disease from United States and it still exists in uh, Nigeria and uh, Ethiopia and Pakistan and so many other countries. So it is a relevant global project, but it may not be relevant for your, your clubs. So having a relevant goal statement is important and it needs to be time bound. When I said like, oh, I want to get five members. But when is it going to be um, in next week, two weeks, five weeks, a year, 10 years of my lifetime? So all those goals need to be time bound. So whenever you are writing the goals for your club and which I recommend you to, all of you to do uh, for your club, all your goals, you need to write it down and pass it on to your, your board and members and uh, uh, keep passing it on every single year. So just make sure that like you have a smart goals 
specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Then prepare action plans. When you have a goal, um, you want to get five members. How would you get them? Do you want to uh, advertise on local media? Do you want to have uh, the uh, membership uh, event? Uh, you want to have uh, your, your local event, go to 4th of July fireworks and uh, put up a table there and, and provide the information and get the members. Prepare that action plan um, and share that plan with your club. Many times we are guilty, many of us are guilty of that, that the board decides on the, on the plan. We decide on, on some action items, we decide on projects and our membership is not aware of it. So they don't feel part of that project. They don't belong, they feel, they don't feel that they, are, they belong to this project. And that is where the, the barriers start. That is where the rift starts. So I would recommend you to share the plan with the club and define the ownership and accountability. I, I used that word before also, but here it is more relevant. Um, say, if you want to get a table at 4th of July, who is going to go and uh, do that application for our uh, borough office? Give that ownership to somebody. And then uh, we always keep talking about, we are all volunteers. So we are not responsible. We are not accountable. That should not be the case. Okay? I, when I'm talking to uh, many of the district governor elects, um, I'll, I'll give a specific example. When I'm talking to our district governor elect, I always keep telling Varsha that uh, you are accountable to not only the 1,400 something members that we have here, because if you do not perform, if you don't do certain uh, things that you are supposed to do, if you don't motivate them, if you don't give a vision, okay, you are letting these people down, 1,400 lions that are part of 16J. But it goes beyond that. You're not just letting them down. Those 1,400 people would have served almost like 3 million people in the Central Jersey area. That is our footprint. So if uh, our governor does not give her best to do that job, we are letting about 3 million people down. If you boil it down to our, our clubs, if our club leadership does not take the responsibility of our club, the, the 25, 30, 40 members that we have, we are letting them down. And in turn, we are letting our town with 30,000, 40,000 people down. We are not providing them the service. So provide like accountability is the important factor. Having accountable does not mean that you won't have fun. Okay, you can have fun. Fun and accountability are, are, are not the, uh, the um, opposite words. You can have fun, but at the same time, you should be responsible. You should be accountable. And that culture, that, that thought process should go trickle down from our leadership into our every single member of the club. When you take on some task, you need to be, every single leader need to be accountable. When you are accountable, your club member will. So I think uh, that is all about plans, quickly moving on to success. Uh, building a success. What do you do to build a success? It's inform your plans, as I mentioned again and again, and excite people. When you inform, give them in, interested, give them that, that uh, view why we should be doing it and how it is beneficial for our communities, our club and every single thing, they will be excited. It is not only that excitement right in the beginning, but maintaining that throughout the life cycle of that project, right from the uh, envisioning the project till the, uh, the, the celebrating the success of the project. Maintain that enthusiasm. Check on the results periodically. Um, like make sure that uh, the people, like you are accountable for uh, reaching those goals on time. So keep checking the result, keep auditing the um, the as various aspect of uh, the, uh, the project. Oops.
and recognize the, con uh, the contributions of everybody, um, making sure that uh, you recognize the right people. Um, sometimes uh, we recognize too many people. We recognize, and this is my philosophy. Everybody's philosophy could be different. Um, if we should not make recognition also very, very cheap. If you give, uh, I'll give you one, one example without going into the details. Uh, there was a competition for uh, the club service activities at some point of time. And uh, after the, uh, the competition was over, the, uh, the winners were about to be announced. Uh, it, was, it was decided by the uh, cabinet that like, oh, we won't have the, like, the winners given awards. We will just give a participation award for every single club that participated. Okay? Yes, every single club did that effort, but the, the, the club would, which won, who, need, who had like sort of more substantial projects, uh, they felt, felt cheated. Okay? So you, there has to be a level of recognition also. And uh, those who have put in a lot of effort needs to get recognized uh, in that fashion. And everybody needs to be, we are, we are all doing voluntary service. We are all uh, putting in our time, our like time, talent and treasure into this uh, association. And all of us need to be recognized but we need to sort of look at the fact of the recognition uh, should be given where it is due and at the level that it is due. I talked quite a bit and I'm not going to leave you uh, without any support. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about what support that you would have from um, our teams at district, multiple district, international level to help you. One most important thing that you have is your district teams. As I mentioned, uh, I personally believe in teams, teamwork, not just having uh, one person uh, who is handling everything. So we would have teams for a variety of tasks and you would have support. And I'm, I'm sure that is what the uh, the, the GMA leaders from 16N and L are also doing. Um, we have uh, uh, the uh, 16N uh, GMA leader in Liu Lambi and uh, Bob Friedel. Uh, you can reach out to them. They will provide you all the resources that you would need at a district level. At a multiple district level, we have Bob Friedel again who can who you can reach out to he can give you as much support as he can to to grow your club help you with all these uh, uh, build a build a team build a vision uh, build a plan and build a success um, process and then uh, there is a small little link that have uh, at the bottom of the screen lionsclubs.org slash e and slash nami slash resources okay i'm going to i'm going to stop sharing this and i'm going to show uh, that page uh, so that you would know what resources that we have there this is the page that i was talking to you about the first part is is focused on new clubs let the district handle that but Revitalized club with new members. You have several of these resources here. Um, the um, invite, how to invite new members. Um, the, um, the, there was a webinar for uh, using 21st century innovations to expand our clubs. 100 recruitment ideas and so on. We have ideas here. Um, we have remotivating our members, new fellowship ideas. Uh, we have the, uh, support to club leaders, forget about district, <laughs> support to the club leaders. The, there are marketing resources. Uh, sometimes we, I hear this like, oh, I can't do the flyer. I can't do the, uh, the graphic for a Facebook post. We all have it here. Like for example, document templates or for advertising, the club event advertisement, you have a word document there we can you can just download that put in your information and you can post it so we have all this 
information that is available. Uh, bookmark this page. This page, the it will change eventually. This we have we are not in uh, NAMI anymore. It is a GMA, but this is a great, great, great resource for you. Anything that you want to have for grooming your club, taking your club to the next step, we have that information available there. Um, having said that, let me stop that and go back to what I was uh, showing you. So those resources are available. Um, your governors are your key resource. Um, reach out to your governors, reach out to your uh, GMA um, leaders, uh, reach out to your GAT, Global Action Team, Global Membership, Global Leadership, Global Service. Uh, we are all here to help you. Okay? Uh, we always feel that, oh, how can I reach out to a district level uh, leader? Don't worry about it. Reach out to each one of us. We are here to serve you. The whole reason that we became the district officers or multiple district officers is to serve you. Okay, So take advantage of that. Take advantage of these resources. And after this whole pandemic, the lockdowns and all these issues that we have, uh, let's come back. And for that, I have a message for you. LCIF is a global force for the good of humanity, supporting the efforts of more than 1.4 million line members embedded in communities across more than 200 countries. For over 100 years, wherever there's a need, there's a lion. Up close, local, getting it done, seeing it through. So in the pandemic lockdown, 1.3 billion people worldwide. Lines in LCIF were already there. Finding new ways to serve the communities from a safe distance. But this too shall pass. And when it does, Lions Clubs and the National Foundation will continue to distribute grant funding where it will be needed most. And a network of 48,000 clubs in every corner of the globe will continue to answer the call. A call that rings louder in the wake of COVID-19. From fighting childhood cancer to being a beacon of hope for the blind, for massive gains in combating diabetes, to feeding the hungry, no matter where lions are. From Italy to America, from Kenya to Japan, LCIF stands at the threshold of one of the greatest comebacks in human history. And there's just one more person we need to answer the call. that one more person that is you please be part of the uh, global membership approach and let's make this association a better association thank you for joining today and thank you for your attention thank you for listening to me and uh, uh, i'm looking forward to working with each one of you wow that's that's a lot of information it's a treasure trove of information Thank you, PCC Mahes, for a great presentation on Global Membership Approach, or GMA for short. It surely is loaded with a wealth of information about Lions Membership Approach. So earlier, I put in chat box if you could uh, write your questions uh, to PCC Mahes about the topic that he uh, mentioned or talked about. And at this point, I let's see, I could see any couldn't see any question. Let me start with a question, Lion Mas. Sure. So there's a great, info, a lot of information that you presented. Uh, will this be shared to the clubs in some form at, in, at some time for them to digest and absorb more? Yeah, uh, the, the thing is like sort of, the bigger concern that I have when I'm presenting this in this particular format, Sometimes, as I, as I mentioned a lot many times, that like it seems too technical, it seems too academic, but it is it is very, very simple process. This is what we do in every single thing that we do in our life. 
If we want to go and buy a pen, hmm, we use the same process. Okay? Uh, we just need to make it a little more simple for our clubs. This presentation is available. I will like, uh, as I mentioned to you before the, before we started, that like this is a brand new new presentation that I did today. Uh, I, I kept talking about the districts and multiple districts and areas and people at a higher level. But now we have to get back to our clubs. So I started this for the clubs and I'm going to work on making it a little more palatable, making, making it more simple for everybody and uh, making sure that our clubs get it. Uh, my goal is to have this presentation to every single club and help them in building their plan for the future. And the thing is basically I mentioned about learning from uh, the lessons. We don't have to learn from the lessons from our own club, okay? There is a lot of these, these uh, testimonials are available for the clubs who have done uh, NAMI for the last couple of years. We have to start sharing those stories. Uh, we have to start sharing stories, okay? And beyond this, this, this technical part of presentation, which I talked about, let's let's sort of combine the um, the stories from from field and share those stories with our clubs, and that is going to be our agenda. And here we don't have that uh, that sort of barriers between oh, 16 J is doing this, 16 N and 16 L. Uh, the stories are stories, so we would all come together and we would start sharing sharing, sharing stories uh, and. Uh, I am sure, like I did talk to all the three incoming governors and they are all for, for it. So we'll be sharing stories. We will be sharing this, this presentation, all my presentations, you can use it as and when and however that you want. Okay. So um, to answer your question in short, things are available, resources are available, we'll give it to our clubs. Thank you, Lion Mujes, that's very encouraging. So now, is there any other question? You may raise your hand or put the chat box. I could but Leo Lion Ojas, you may want to help me here if somebody is raising his or her hand. I'll let you know, but currently no one is has their hand raised. I think uh, second VDG elect Evelio, did you raise your hand? Or or first the VDG elect, Cas Castellori. You may unmute. I think I put many people to sleep. Yes. Okay. okay. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, first of all, uh, uh, I'm sorry I came in a little late. I, there was another meeting I had to attend and I apologize for that. And there was a convenient, uh, there was sort of very important to me. But anyway, long story short, <clears throat> Thank you, Mahesh. Uh, I saw, I think I joined around five after eight or something, the last leg of the, your presentation is amazing. Uh, question I have is, I have not heard, uh, we have district goal at this point or they are not out yet or what's the vision? Our district health governor has put out those goals so that we start working on it. Uh, you can only trickle down. Uh, once we have goal and vision, then we can share the responsibility into the uh, zones and, and, and various clubs and uh, members then. So I was wondering if, if there's something out there which I'm missing or is something coming, coming up soon? Uh, the, uh, the, obviously you need to have that discussion with the uh, uh, incoming governor, but just to give you a background on that, the, uh, the deadline for submitting the goals to the international, preparing the goals and submitting the goals to the international is 31st not 31st, 30th of <laughs> June. June. <laughs> like we don't have 31st, <laughs> yeah. 30th of June. So yeah. I'm sure that it will be coming in very shortly. And as I mentioned uh, again and again in the presentation that, uh, and again, it, it will happen in our district also that we will be sharing uh, the, I would be getting the goals also. I, I'm looking forward to having those goals from um, DG E Varsha. So once I get those goals, uh, I would be working on goals for the, the GMA. Uh, the GMT will be working on their goals. Everybody will be working on their goals and they would be uh, available for uh, every single member of our 
our district. I feel that every single member should have our district goals. They are not, uh, in the past, we used to call it as a district governor's goals, but they are not so. They are, they are district goals for now on. So everybody will get those goals in due course. Yeah, and uh, the reason I mentioned was that uh, if we have, the, we have already our various zone chairs and regional chairs and all the committees, GMT, GLT, GSC, and GMA is all set up pretty much. So at least we people who are at this point part of the process should know what the DG goals are. But anyway, it's a matter of like a couple of more days, not a big deal. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, for that question, um, first BDG Cash, you will get the district goal soon as PCC Mahesh already mentioned the deadline for submitting our goals for district goals is 30th of this June. So whenever the goals are going out, you will be notified. As you know that my agenda for the year is already out and you, you, are, you are part of that process. We had a couple of meeting with that. So just wait a couple of more days. You will get not you, the entire district will get the district goals pretty soon. Thank you, DG Cash. Lion DG, Ivasha, I am here to support you any which way I can. That's all. I'm not here to putting you on the spot that the goals are not out there. I say they are there, and if I don't know, that's why. No, you, I, I will, you will find it out. You don't have yeah. to worry about that. No you problem. Will, you Thank will, you. Will, so you will get the notification pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much for your concern. Next question, everybody. I have one more compliment, Rohel. May I? Yes, please. You, you look very sharp and you're amazing MC, my friend. Thank you so much okay. for holding this position. <laughs> you did a phenomenal job. Thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, when we are getting the uh, questions, I would just want to tell you is that like sort of uh, the, the difference between, and like I had this discussion with all the uh, people who are working on developing <coughs> and GMA, the difference between what we used to do and what we are going to do with a GMA is not much different, okay? It is the same process, okay? We just need to formalize the process. We just need to have uh, put the things into proper perspective. Uh, when we talked about the, the plans, the, the district did go through uh, the, um, the uh, uh, build a vision sessions. The, there was like the, uh, I think three or four, I don't even remember, I'm becoming a little old. Uh, three uh, sessions. Three, we uh, had three, yeah, sessions three sessions where yeah. we had uh, we had talked to all the clubs, all the members that could join, uh, asking them what are their what are their what what do they feel that their strengths are, what are the weaknesses, <clears throat> what is that support that they would need from from the district, what support do they need from their zones. So we have that data. Um, we, as I mentioned, um, I. Uh, from a GMA perspective and 16J, I'm working on the, uh, the, the, the leadership for various committees. Um, and I, I think I send it to you also, uh, uh, DG and first VDG. And I think a couple of other people on the call, uh, I have sent you the, the proposed uh, team. Again, it is a proposed team. Uh, you as the district governor team, uh, the DG, E, DG, first VDG, second VDG, you are the ones who are going to give me a green signal to uh, ask these people to be a part of the team. But once you do that, uh, we will not, I, we will not spend an extra minute uh, and make sure that uh, we would have the right team in place. Okay, well, I know has looks like the, there's a question here. It uh, looks like a follow up to uh, one that was mentioned a while ago. Will the training material be stored somewhere centrally for all clubs to access? Uh, 
that is more of a question again for uh, District Governor Lake Varsha. Uh, from my perspective, um, I never put in the uh, uh, copyright on my presentations. So my presentations are always available, not to just uh, view, but reuse. If you want to take this presentation and uh, use it in your clubs to talk to your club members, I know that like we couldn't have every single uh, member of our club. We cannot have 1400 people coming onto this particular call. So uh, you, can, you can very well take my presentations and use it wherever you feel necessary. Uh, and we can collaborate. We can work together on, on a brilliant <clears throat> presentation for the and, club. Uh, Rohel, for that answer, uh, even la even for the last uh, last day's presentation, we put it the entire presentation on YouTube link, and it is it is open for everybody. So all the club members, please go and check out our YouTube links, and you can find all the training uh, sessions over there. Even for today's session, I'm planning to put it over there. So we are very much open this year. The administration is very much open. We want to, we want to help our clubs. That is the main agenda. So for the question, uh, how long this uh, YouTube will be available? Is there an expression there on this or? No, YouTube forever. has never forever. expression this, forever, yeah. And Thank we you. really, we really want everybody to please go and check out our YouTube page and maybe, oh, just if you can just write down the YouTube, <laughs> in the chat box would be great for everybody to go and uh, uh, check it out, yeah. I am not sure Already? whether Rojas knows about it. Oh, really? Okay, uh, let me let me do it. I do, I'll post a link in the chat in a couple okay. seconds. Yeah. And Lion Varsha, uh, for, for those who are here right now, it's okay, they'll see it. How about the other clubs they have not attended? How will they be able to know? Uh, pretty soon, I'm going to share this link to the uh, 16J, all the clubs in the 16J. And I would really appreciate if Marie can share into the 16N and Douglas both can share into 16J. So all the clubs will get the links. Wow, that's great. Let's see. Uh, anybody else has a question? <laughs> First, uh, we have championed at the, about 28 of the charter clubs. And uh, you're the, a, an expert at that. And perhaps you could share a little bit of, of, of an idea of how to uh, look at the, or if the, you're the, like a recruiter. And if the, you look for individuals that, that could actually uh, charter clubs, how do you start at the, or go about doing that? Because that's also the part of the of, of building at the, uh, clubs as well. The, the important thing about building the club, again, this is out of the realm of the this club uh, training, it, it is more yeah. for district training, but right. the, the way that we should be doing uh, is to figure out what is the need. Um, if there is a particular area of uh, uh, service is not being supported, uh, I'm becoming a big proponent of specialty clubs. I'm becoming a big proponent of the cause-based clubs, like say, for example, diabetes. We need to have clubs for diabetes. Find out who are passionate about diabetes, bring them together and build a club around them and focus on serving those, those who are in need. Other, other part is um, the, uh, the building a club, according to me, it, it is again, goes by the same process. You know, like you, you bring, in, uh, bring in few passionate people uh, we always say that like, oh, we need 20, 20 members to start a club. We don't need 20 members. We need four or five passionate members. You get, bring in four or five passionate people together and they build a club around them. Hmm? Same thing, the, 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 the existing clubs, okay? We shouldn't ignore the existing clubs. The existing clubs motivate three or four people in the club who are very, very passionate about what is the service that that club provides, okay? and they will make the club bigger and more uh, stronger to support their communities. Okay, having said that, I'm, I'm going to just pause for a moment uh, and I'm going to put somebody on the spot, uh, which I shouldn't be doing, but I will. Uh, we have uh, our uh, GATT area leader, uh, EID Cindy on the call, I believe. Um, like who is hosting, Ojas is hosting? 
Oh, just can you please unmute uh, PID Cindy? I'm unmuted, but I'm not sure what you want me to say. <laughs> no, I just wanted to bring you in to talk about uh, uh, what we are doing all over, not only in New Jersey, but. Thank you. Well, yes, you explained this very, very well. And of course, the past couple of years, we've been working with the North American Membership Initiative. But as past council chair um, Mahesh has mentioned that now we're going to be transitioning to the global membership approach. And um, I thought that all of his examples of the four stages were fantastic. I mean, certainly easy to understand and to be able to present to the clubs to be able to do. And, and I like the fact too, that he said to have the club members write down for the SWOT analysis, because this way you can collect those, compile them and come up with a, a plan that your club can use. Because yes, this is a bottoms up approach, which is I think wonderful because some of the reasons that the, that the previous um, programs or initiatives have not been as successful is because it was top down. But we need to understand that unless we can get the clubs to change and to buy into this, we're not going to be able to change the culture and to be able to add more members, more clubs and do more relevant service. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you for joining us, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you, I enjoyed it. And just to be a build up uh, on top of that, um, just like what Mahesh was uh, mentioning, is bringing in the, those individuals that could actually be incorporated in our clubs and we build around them and help them to achieve the, those service activities that, that they're passionate about. And that's how our, the clubs that are existing could continue to grow. So thank you very much, Mahesh. Appreciate that thought. Thank you. And just for a brief uh, 16J, uh, GMA champion is PCC Light Mahesh Chitney. So yes, we have to learn a lot of things from you and with your support and help, we will definitely going into a positive direction. And we are, and we are really excited to be part of your GMA. The, the thing is not, not going to be a guidance from me. I'm <laughs> going to be very, very clear about that. My, my, my role and my goal is to, uh, to start the conversation. Okay? The information and everything will be coming back from the clubs, from the new members, from the uh, senior members, from the members who are being active, <clears throat> who are sort of not being active for a little while. So it has to come from everywhere. And that is where uh, the mandate that we have for the GMA is to create that vision. We are not going to execute. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I jokingly said uh, the other day uh, that like we are consultants, okay? We will not do anything. We'll just tell you what to do. So uh, it is, it is uh, my goal to figure out what is the need of our district or what our need of our area uh, and find out what solutions that our clubs can implement by themselves and relay that we would be like we will be doing a lot of storytelling. We will be talking about what what worked, what didn't work, and uh, like I'm just loud thinking here. But uh, if you can give uh, GMA a space into your cabinet meeting, just five minutes to talk for our clubs to talk about their their services, that would be great. I I request that same thing to. Uh, uh, DG Murray, that if you can give somebody uh, in your district a chance to talk about what worked, how to, forget about what worked, what didn't work. So we don't have to uh, go on working on something that is not working. And every club is trying to do the same thing and end of the day, nothing works. Okay, We don't have to waste our energy. So if we can, if all the governors, unfortunately, we couldn't have uh, our third governor elect here today. But um, if all of you can give that chance for your clubs to talk, okay, 
that will be the, the, the best possible outcome. We will, we will, and we should. Definitely. I agree. 100%. Any more notes or questions? You wish you could stay longer. There's so much that you need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I think the, the best thing would be like sort of uh, ending it as soon as you can, not dragging it long. All right. Uh, all right. So, uh, one thing that we will request, uh, Rohel. Yeah. Uh, um, and after I close, uh, we'd like to request you to please turn on your video for a pictorial. So please ready. <laughs> okay. So we can get the picture now. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you can, yeah, you can do that. So those who want to be in the picture, if you can yeah, if, uh, open up your cameras, we will appreciate that. It will be great if everybody is in the picture. Ready to say cheese? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is everybody, everybody ready? Okay. Okay, page one. One, <laughs> two, three, cheese. Okay, let me go to page two. Okay, everybody. One, two, three, cheese. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so let me end tonight's session. Uh, before we end this evening's activity, we have some announcement to make. Tomorrow at the same time, at seven o'clock to nine o'clock p.m., we'll have the third part of the training series on the subject, President and the Club Leadership. Another wonderful session to look forward to. I hope everyone here has also registered for tomorrow's event. And on Thursday, the topic will be digital resources, my lion or my LCI. And on Friday, it, the topic will be the role of secretary and treasurer. So each session is very important so please consider registering to all of them. So before we officially end, I would like to thank incoming state advisor and PCC Mahesh Chitnis for sharing your time, your talent, your effort, and your wisdom on the topic that we had tonight. I would also like to thank uh, Council Chair-elect Armando Guerra, District 16J, 16N Governor-elect Marie Nieto, our very own District 16J Governor-elect, Varsha Naik, and Leo Lyon Ojas Chitnis for the, from the Leo Leadership for your participation, background assistance in tonight's program. I would like to acknowledge the presence of some officers who took their time to be with us tonight. Past International Director, Cindy Gregg, we heard her a while ago. Past Council Chair, Winster Ceballos, First DG, 16J uh, District Governor Kevin Kasabuki. Past District Governor Ruth Chua from the Philippines. Yay! 16J First District Governor elect Cass Delori. 16J Second Vice Governor elect District Governor elect Evelio Salermo. 16J Treasurer Diane Andre. Multiple District 16 GLT Chair Anu Chitnis and current 16 J GMT Coordinator Subarna Sani. And we also have here Leo Lyon, Leeson, Saloni, Naik, and all the other officers of the district, past, present, and incoming. And of course, everyone here tonight for your wonderful presence that made this event possible. And uh, I'm if I may, I would like to acknowledge the presence of, of members from my club. We have seven of them from Somerville Metro Lions Club. Thank you. And before we end, tonight, I would like to share a favorite quotation, if I may, to ponder upon or reflect on, if you will, which encapsulates for me that the items mentioned in this evening session. And it says, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. From Helen Keller. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. 
You stay well. Good night. Good night.